Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Forgecraft Evolved. I'm Max and Evolved, and today we are going to kind of get our resin farm working better. So let me show you what I'm talking about. In a previous episode, I I had detailed how I, you know, I blocked the the agitator from making our our hive mind here. I guess it's a hive mind from spawning more resin because I wanted to add another set of batteries to the to the top here but as you can see we have this this block of resin right here that we need to get rid of so I can put another battery up so what I'm gonna do in the short term I think I'm just going to let me think here I want to take these or I, I guess I have other ones but I want to get some what are these the ablators and the liquefiers up higher and powered so that I can use them to melt and liquefy all this stuff. So to do that, now we got a couple couple things to take into account here. Number one, I need to I need to power whatever I'm gonna put up there, right? So I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do that. I might just make a temporary kind of battery placement like I might put a mark 4 battery just somewhere temporarily on the wall and just feed it with laser energy transmitters um yeah I don't see that being a I, I've got enough mark 4 battery components maybe that is what I'm gonna do because I don't want to well actually now that I'm actually thinking about this out loud for the eventual battery that I'm gonna put on the on the ceiling like this one I need to have a way for number one the power to get up to the battery and number two a way for the uh the material to flow down so you can kind of see what i'm doing here where i'm coming around where the laser energy transmitters are i think i'm gonna do the same thing with this i had moved i had moved this setup right here to accommodate and try to clear out some of this area but it looks like it only cleared out parts of it so I think I'm going to switch this back to the the side orientation that it was. Move these these pipes around to accommodate kind of like this one to accommodate the uh the power supplies the the laser energy transmitters and you know the the down downspout for the the return. And then I'm going to throw a battery up there temporarily. So I'm going to do that real quick. I'm going to movie magic it. And you guys will come right back. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Alright. So here's just the down and dirty setup that I've got going on right here. Um, this is just a temporarily placed battery. Like I said, this one is going to go up on the ceiling. And actually with this one right here, I'm thinking I might want to move that. So it's kind of spaced similarly to these ones. But... I mean, I guess it's not a huge deal where it's placed. We might just have to see in action. It's what, four blocks, and these are closer to... What's that, like, almost ten blocks, right? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so, I don't know if a five-block difference is going to be that big of a deal. Uh, in fact, I might... Hmm. There's a couple things I need to take into account, right? Number one, I need to move this power line. I like this setup I'm gonna keep these where they are but I think I'm just gonna have oh geez I'm gonna to have to figure out how to get this power coming from maybe one of these supply lines somewhere maybe I'll even have the power come off that top battery and just come over back and down I don't know there's there's plenty of ways to do it because I need to get I need to get power coming from up here into this battery and then I need to get the returns, like the, the tubes going back down to tie it into the supply line here for the liquefied resin. So uh, that's charging right now. So let's go ahead and place some of the stuff already. So I'm just going to throw down a few ablators. This will probably end up processing the whole thing, right? Everything on there. So I'm just going to throw this down. And then I'm going to do something real simple. I'm just going to bring this, put a pipe on here, and just bring it straight down. Uh, something like that. Right? And then 
Yep, that that will that'll hit the pipe below it. Oh, let me just make sure I'm I'm too far away. It's not rendering. Okay, okay. So I think if I just go like that, it'll work. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's gonna clear out that area. So while that's doing its thing over there, I'm gonna come over here and set up set this up for what I need as far as taking out or sending power and getting the resin back, right? So actually that can stay, right? Because that's fine. This needs to go. This whole setup right here. Because I think I am just going to take power straight off of this and run it kind of back over and down. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. That should be, that should be plenty. Okay, so that's kind of hard without any uh, anywhere to kind of move around, huh? Anywhere to stand. Can I stand on this? I should be able to. Ooh, ooh. Nailed it. Okay, so I'm going to do a blader. A blader, a blader, a blader. And then two liquefiers. A small storage hopper. And then, oh man, it's already starting to melt what I'm standing on. Okay. So let's do this. Let's throw these on there. And then we'll need something going like that. And then remember, we want to encase this all in glass just because if we don't, there is the possibility that when the hives grow, they could get too big and choke off the power lines. That's why everything is covered in glass. And then... Oh, I need to put glass up there, don't I? Okay, let's see how I can do this. Um, will you reach? I think you will. Perfect. And this glass serves another purpose of allowing me to just piggyback off of it for placing my pipes. Let's bring you all the way down. Put one more. That should be perfect. Uh, let me think here. Oh, okay, I, I just have them coming straight across, don't I? Is that the right way? No? Yes, okay. So then what I need to do is come over this way, as far over as I can, and just kind of run that. Perfect. Now I'll just take those extras. Collect them, ideally. Catch them. No, okay. So then now I just need to, it's literally just a matter of running, hmm, oh, actually that'll be fine. One pipe down, right? One pipe down and just make sure, there we go. Okay, so this is hooked up. This is, this is all we need to do. We already have the solar panel up top. It clearly already got rid of that little, that little area. That's going perfectly. So let us make sure wait 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 wait. i took away the power transmitter over here dang it oh wait oh no i was just i was looking in the completely wrong area <laughs> that's the power transmitter okay i don't know how i got so twisted around all right easy though easy so we're just gonna do something like this all right and then we're gonna come over let me get a better angle here Ideally, without without falling. Oh my gosh, let me just get on this. All right. Send that over. That should be hitting right about there. And now that's all powered up. Perfect. And remember, this span, we don't want to cover up with glass because we want this to get hit by the power but we also want it to get interrupted so this doesn't grow too big. But everything else, we cannot have being interrupted. So, I can't tell how close that is. One more is necessary. Perfect. Okay, so now this one's set up. And this looks like it has done its job over here. Yep, it looks like it has done its job. So I'm going to just get rid of everything and waste all of my hard work. 
<laughs> Isn't that always how it works out, though? It's all right, though. It's it's fulfilled its purpose. We've all got jobs to do, and that did its job. So luckily, I've already got the power right here, so that's easy. I will need to go make another Mark II organic solar panel, though. Because that is how I'm supplementing these upper batteries with power. So let's... Well, we got to place the thing first, right? So I know we're going to come out one. Now, I'm going to just mirror that one. Just for the sake of mirroring that one. I don't really have a reason why. I'm just doing it. So, one, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm going to do this, right? And I'm opening that up because that's where I want... That's how I'm going to know where it is for my solar panels, right? Pick up all the stuff down here. And I know these are going to come three. I'm going to open that up more just because... It's all going to get covered up anyway, but you know what? And boom! Okay. That's done. Let's throw the additional power up there. And then luckily, I've been lucky enough to have a huge stockpile of refined liquid resin that, that my fuel makers could use. So like, haven't had to worry about running short on fuel while I'm waiting for this to work. But once I kick this back on, essentially, once I remove this block right here, this is like the key blocking everything. Once that's gone, this thing's going to spiral out of control again. But this time, I should be able to... Whoa, I didn't even notice there was a hole right there. Let's throw that back. All well, the other holes should be good. We don't want any holes if you guys... If you guys didn't see the episodes where I was making this whole structure, we don't want openings other than our entrance because then the uh, the resin could escape out of the enclosure and go towards those holes. And what's preventing us from actually, what's preventing this from actually busting out of the enclosure is this, this hole right here. So if I were to close this up, then the resin can just go right through these blocks from what I understand. So now let me throw on since i'm already in here i'm gonna throw on all the the pieces i need to start harvesting everything and then literally it's just a matter of getting that going where i need it to so let's do this perfect 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 and i will say making making all those crystal clocks in the previous episode has really helped out because that's what these use is crystal clocks are you the right way red nope we want green perfect and then just bring you all the way down put some more glass down here and then literally just put that right there and everything should be hooked up like we're, we're just good to go okay so let me go I don't... Oh, let me see if I have the stuff for a solar panel. Let me go grab them. I'll be right back. All right. So I should need nine of these. Nine. This should give me nine of these. And this should give me nine of these. Perfect. So let's go up top real quick. We'll just we'll just skedaddle on out here. We'll, we'll zoom up to the top because that's how we roll. And we'll get rid of these. And we will just throw these on here two three perfect okay so now i have everything up here with mark ii organic solar panels which i think i know it says like 360 but i think it does even more than that honestly uh if i look at the up to okay it doesn't say but i think it does like 450 something like that i know it does like quite a bit so with that being said Let's unblock and see how things work. Is that battery full? Pretty much. And let's let's watch how this grows because this will start growing. Look at that already. And again, this is going to work as long as this has line of sight. Once this grows too big and cuts that off, there will still be a little bit of growth afterwards, but it won't it, it won't be so much that it's not able to 
Well, I don't know what that growling is. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but the growth won't be so much, and you can see how it's getting stopped by the roof there, and it's not exceeding the roof. But these things, like, I've noticed they like to grow up and then out. And that was kind of the one of the motivations for these two additional sets of liquefiers and ablators because we want to be able to harvest this as much as we can. And before I had added these, you guys kind of saw there was just stuff that wasn't getting touched. It was just out of the reach of anything else. So this will stop that from happening pretty much. And you can see like we're already cut off, but it should still be growing a little bit. You'll kind of see some stuff like right out here. You see stuff adding in. So this system completely self-contained. And let me tell you guys, we are going to need this to be performing. I, I'm even considering potentially building a second setup for a couple of reasons. And let me kind of, since I, I'm pretty, you know, this task kind of went a lot faster than I anticipated. Let me kind of give you guys a tour and some, some kind of setup ideas that I have for going forward before we start charging the OET. So number one, we still have these missiles. 6,000, they're chilling, they're all plasma imbued. I might actually end up swapping out half of these for the uh, armor piercing retrofitters or whatever, so that we have half plasma, half armor piercing, and use those, you know, maybe from a, some, somebody mentioned one of the comments, maybe just like a single launcher for each one. And maybe instead of using these, whole setups for missile launchers we just have like one centralized platform that's somewhere in the middle or something i don't know uh, again still kind of figuring that all out and if we look down here you can kind of see something else i did so a huge bottleneck for our what are they alloyed machine blocks a huge bottleneck for these is our gold production we essentially have one gold line that's feeding everything in there so what did I ended up doing to kind of save uh, laser energy transmitters is instead of having 10 per face, I just did five with an organic lens, which doubles, right? So five, five, it, I, I did that on every corner and that dramatically cuts down on the amount of laser energy transmitters I need for these batteries. And speaking of these batteries, we are getting tacked pretty relentlessly. We pretty much always have an attack going, but this setup has been able to hold out tremendously. Uh, I mean, the the little wasps do tend to get by just because they fly fast, but they don't get much. They, they don't ever really pass there. But this amount of lasers just destroys everything. And with with the amount of turrets and the amount of turbines we have feeding these batteries, we have been able to hold out pretty well. I haven't noticed any kind of power issues. We are generating more than enough and we are pretty much taking everything out. So adding missiles is only going to increase that. But I mean, you just look how quick things are falling like that. That's this, you know, there's there's almost 200 lasers here. There's over 200 lasers here actually firing. So plenty of lasers to take care of our our defense needs. So that has given us time to work on a couple other things. And one of the things I want to try to do is incorporate more, uh, I, I like the concept of like secret passages and stuff. And uh, you know, if you look over here, there's actually a secret passage, quote unquote secret, it's not a huge secret, but there is something that I've kind of hidden, sort of, depending on the angle you're looking at. And it's actually right over here. So if you look at this wall right here, you might not see anything immediately, but if I start moving to the side here, You'll see that I actually put a little door and a little hallway down here, which if you go into, it just brings us right down here. You know, we're right here by the, uh, this is actually the uh, the laboratory, uh, the tier two research pod crafting station, right? So if we go on in here, you know, completely, it's, a, it's its own separate thing. And you would never really notice it. And you know, I just have this inconspicuous doorway right here, which I could actually probably put back here if I wanted to, just to, you know, kind of do, you know, kind of hide it a little bit more, but I just like the idea of having these secret quote unquote secret passages. I might do a little bit more to camouflage this, you know, maybe actually like kind of bring that in or something, make, make the, uh, make the opening a little bit harder to see. I know. I just think it's fun. I would love, you know, I know obviously this game is not getting updated at all anymore. It's, it's, it's a done game. It's, 
you know the the creator is working on the next in installment of this game series which side note super excited for but you know if there were like switches and doorways that you could kind of build i would totally do that you know i i had wanted to maybe you know put something in between these walls here to get us into different places and you know it, it just I don't know. Maybe I'll make a room that you can only access by teleporter or something. There's, you know, there's just a lot of a lot of cool little things that I think would be fun to do that I just don't know if I'm going to ever get around to doing because there's a lot to do in this game. Speaking of there being a lot to do, let's come over here. So, I had mentioned, I think in the last episode, or maybe the one before that, one of the two last episodes, this was going to be for our Hodor. In other words, the... If you guys don't know what a Hodor is, Hodor is High Orbital Debris Object Reclaimer. What that really does, it, it sits here and it shoots a rocket up. And the rocket will hit research pods and they'll fall and you go collect the research and you can analyze it for research points. Now, that uses a couple different things. Number one, it takes coal and I think high hot, the, the fuel, the high energy composite fuel that we make. Turns it into rocket fuel, basically, and launches it up, blah, blah, blah. So, the next episode is probably going to be me getting this situated and doing all this and that. And if you look over here, I have the start of something that I'm working on for this project. Um, I am also debating getting rid of this or utilizing that one or maybe this one, again, as a dedicated uh, fuel factory similar to what we, a resin farm for fuel, similar to what we already have, specifically for the Hodor. The only thing about that being is that the Hodor doesn't, I mean, it's just for research points, right? So it's not super important, but I think it'll still be fun to kind of have something dedicated for that. And I found it uses coal, and I found like a 5 million coal vein right here, right? I think it's 5 million. We'll find out real quick. Yeah, 5.91 million coal. So that's plenty of coal. You see it goes all the way down there. Plenty of coal, plenty of resin if we decide to either make a resin farm or we'll just, you know, probably, I guess, matter move fuel just like we do down for all of our turbines. Matter, mute, matter move the fuel into, hmm... I'm trying to think about the best way to get that there, and I'm tr I'm thinking of, you know, c is there a way I can utilize existing networks to make sure that we have the fuel going where we need it to go? One option is to use priority splitters, of course, and maybe do something over here where I, you know, priority split from the hopper to go up into this array right here, so... This would be the priority, right? And if that's full, then it sends more fuel, I don't know, over here. And we kind of have it follow the coal. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure that out in the next episode. But I just want to give you guys a, a glimpse at what's coming in the future. And, you know, hopefully you guys are as excited as I am. Because we're getting close to, to getting this thing charging up. I'm saving up materials to build tons of turbines. And I'm going to need a bunch of laser energy transmitters and lenses and all that stuff just to make sure that we try to charge this thing as fast as possible because although one side is holding out from a a defense standpoint and a battery charge standpoint I don't know how well that's going to fare with all four sides being attacked and you know really pushing our our logistics the logistics aspect of our base i.e. our fuel production and and all that to its limits and our energy transmission capabilities and generation capabilities. It's going to be taxing all of that at the same time. So I would kind of rather be overprepared than underprepared. But I mean, you can see these guys are not getting past the outer wall. And they're just going down. They're going down hard. So hopefully that holds up. I think it will. Oh, side note. Since I got, since I got you guys here. I was thinking about another way of increasing the amount of Falcors we have. And I thought about maybe go in vertical with these and i'll explain that to you guys more in a future episode so for now i think i'm going to call that an episode as we watch all of these monsters just get mercilessly slaughtered by our 200 plus lasers i thank you guys so much for hanging out you know if you like the video and you're not subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe button uh 
the 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 growth rate of this channel has been just astounding to me. I never I never dreamed that you know I'd be pushing 200 subscribers after doing this for less than a year. So I appreciate every single one of you guys that takes the time to watch these videos, and I hope you're enjoying this series as as much as I am enjoying making it. So on that note, guys, again, thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next one.